Well, once again, I'm going back on what I said in the last video. I spent some more time making sure that the tracking was perfect on these two wheels. I got it well enough that I feel confident that I can boost the speed up. So to do that, I added a piece of plywood to the front of the pulley, and then I turned that into a pulley shape just with it mounted on the motor. I'm getting quite a bit of chatter there while I'm turning it. I really should have clamped down the motor a little bit better. So that takes the blade speed up to around 3,500 feet per minute. I may take it even higher. I'll have to see how the thing cuts. I also made these things right here, and these are going to be my blade guides for the saw. These are just short lengths of steel angle with pieces of ceramic tile glued on with construction adhesive. I use my grinder with the diamond blade to cut the pieces of ceramic tile from a larger tile that I already have. To attach them, I drilled a 3 8 inch hole in the other side of the angle, and that'll allow me to screw it right onto the support. Now, this is an experiment. I actually had a comment on my a previous video. I think it's the one where I show the blade guides for my bandsaw. Someone said, why not use ceramic? So, I don't know if they meant specifically ceramic tile, but I got to thinking that I, I could give it a try, you know, cut it out and glue it on and see how it works. Okay, I measured the distance between the blade where it is and the frame, and I need pieces that are two and three quarters inches wide. And I got this piece of, well, you guess it used to be two by eight, but I cut some off it already. And I'll cut it from that. Now I can cut them to length on the miter saw, and then I can screw them to the frame. But first I have to remove the motor and some of the other stuff that I put on there so that I can access the back of the frame. The way blade guides work is that they don't actually touch the blade when it's running. It's only when the blade tries to move up or down in this case that it will constrain it and keep it on track. It'll also keep it from twisting too much as well. I've got my first one in place here. I squared it down from the frame. Now the idea is to get it over as far as I can that way, but it still has to fit in between the blade and the wheel. I put the right amount of tension on the blade for it. And I'm going to take the other guide, put it in place down underneath, and mark the location for that. Now I can take it off again and bring it over to the table saw workbench and drill the hole and drive the screw. Now once these are in place I can still adjust them a little bit because I drilled the hole in the steel angle oversized. Now I've got the second guide on. I've got it put in and clamped up tight where it's supposed to be. I'm going to screw it in place Temporarily, I'll have to take it off again because I need to put the thrust bearing on, the one that keeps the blade from pushing back. For the thrust bearings, I'm using regular ball bearings here, and I bolted it onto an aluminum angle. This is the same angle that I use to line up the wheel, and that's going to attach to the side of the blade guide like that. I've drilled the holes oversized here so that I'll be able to move it in and out slightly to adjust it. To mark it, I've got the blade guy put back in and I'm just going to hold it up so that the bearing is lined up centered on the blade and then mark where the angle meets the blade guide. Then I can take it off, drill the holes and screw it on. The idea here is to get it close to the point where it's not going to need a whole lot of adjustment and then I've left enough space here with these oversized holes to move it in and out enough to make the final adjustments. I adjusted it to where it should be 
And now to lock it in place, I drilled a smaller hole and I'm going to drive a screw into that. Well, I got the other set of blade guides done and adjusted. And I also built a simple guard that will more or less keep the blade from flicking off in case it breaks. I also got the motor put back in, at least temporarily. I've got to take it off again to rewire it for 240. So with all that done, I can give it another try to see how well the blade guides are, are working. Well, let's back out to the shed again. Get another couple of try for us to make the dolly. I've also got these casters here. These are fixed ones. I used these a few years ago to make an entertainment center actually. Uh, it had one of these big flat screen CRT TVs that weighed a thousand pounds in it. And I put these on it so you can roll it out to get at the wires in the back. First thing I gotta do is trim off the ends. I gotta watch these ones though because they have nails in them that couldn't be pulled out or I was too lazy to pull out actually. Then I want them to be 48 inches long and that's how long the cart's gonna be. Make sure I got no nails there and cut it off. Well, there's not a whole lot to this cart. It's very easy to make. I've got these two longer pieces here. The casters just get screwed in place on the end here. I'm going to use one and a quarter inch screws through the holes that I already drilled before when I mounted it onto the cabinet. The way this card is put together is that these long pieces go through, the casters are attached to that, and then the part that actually holds up the logs are underslung, they're underneath the cart, so that they stick down. Uh, the problem with that is that really puts a lot of pressure on these joints where they join to the long pieces, so they have to be strong. So I'm going to use 3 8 threaded rod again to put those together. It's put together. See how it rolls. Works straight. The idea behind the fixed casters is that you only want it to go straight, <laughs> you know, one direction back and forth. The swivel casters won't work here. Okay, that's going to be it for this one. Uh, saw is done, except for the electrical. I need to rewire the motor for 240 and add a switch in so I can switch it on and off, which is handy. Uh, next time, in the last video, we're going to do some cutting. I'll bring it out back where I'll set up the track for it to be attached to and for that dolly to ride on. And then we'll wrestle log on it and see how well it works.